In this video playlist, I want to talk about shortest path algorithms. This is one of the most common problems that people will often look at when they are dealing with graphs. And we're going to start off by looking at, in particular, single source shortest path. In this particular problem, the idea is we have a graph. It's a directed graph, and it has weights on the edges. And we have one particular vertex in our graph that we call the starting vertex, and we want to find the shortest path to every other vertex that's in the graph. Okay, so one thing about this problem is it does have optimal substructure, so that means that we can use dynamic programming or, in some situations, greedy solutions to it. Some of the algorithms for this, in particular the greedy algorithm that we'll look at, do not allow negative weights. Uh, some of them do allow negative weights, at least on, on edges. The idea of a, of a negative weight is you, you have an edge that basically you get something back in traversing it. However, none of the solutions to this should ever involve cycles. And if a graph ever has a negative weight cycle, that would cause a problem because then there would be no solution to it. So to help us think about this, I've drawn a little graph here. This graph has eight vertices and a number of edges connecting them. It's actually a fairly sparse graph. If you look at it for a while, you'll see that most of the vertices have no more than one outgoing edge. There's a few that, that have more than that. Um, and each of the edges is given a numeric weight. If we're talking about an algorithm that could handle a negative edge, I can do something like make this edge a negative 2, uh, but I could not make this edge a negative 20, because if that were a negative 20, it would be possible to go from 4 to 8 to 5 to 2 to 0 and back to 4 and then to 8 again. And you'll notice the 3 plus the 1 plus the 0 plus the 2 is only 6. So every time I went through this loop, I would actually lose 14 more. So to find the, the lowest cost, I would just keep going around that, that cycle forever and ever. Uh, basically, there is no lowest cost. But for some of the algorithms, you can have a, a single edge with a negative weight as long as, the whole, as all whole cycles in it have a positive weight. Now, the algorithms that we're going to talk about, there are two uh, basic functions that, that we're going to use. An initialization, so we need to have vertices, and the vertices have a distance and a parent that they keep track of. All of the distances are initialized originally to infinity, the parents are initialized to null, and then our starting node, whatever our starting node happens to be, is initialized to a distance of zero because we're already there. And you might have noticed in my uh, drawing here that I have this table. If we were starting at zero, this is what init would produce for us. Zero would have a distance of zero and everything else would have a distance of infinity. Because it actually makes a slightly better example, I'll probably start with making seven our start. It's kind of arbitrary where we start at. The other function that we're going to use regularly is what's called relax. And the idea of relax is we want to check if I can get to a vertex V coming from U more efficiently than how I got to V previously. Okay, so we check to see if the current distance that we have stored for getting to V if that's greater than the distance it takes to get to u, and I'm using distance as opposed to sum of weights because it's a nice terminology, plus the distance that it, u is from v, well, in that case, it's better to go to u, however we had that, and then go directly from u to v than it is to use whatever old path we had to v. So we're, we're going to relax the distance on v which causes two changes. One, the new distance to V is what we get if we go to U and then follow the edge from U to V. 
And we also set u to be the parent of v so that we know that the way that we got to v is coming from u. Okay. So those are our two kind of basic functions that we're going to utilize here. The first algorithm that we want to talk about is Bellman-Ford. And the Bellman-Ford algorithm actually allows negative weight edges and it also happens to detect negative cycles. So this algorithm is order v times e and when we call it we give it a start node we call that init function and then we run through a loop one to v minus one times. This loop is just making sure that we do this a certain number of times the the i index is not used down in here and for each time through that loop so v minus one times we're going to go through every edge in the entire graph and we're going to call relax given these two for loops it's fairly easy to see how we get this order this is an order v loop this is an order e loop and since they're nested the whole thing is order v times e the idea here is that at every step when we run through all the edges we're going to check uh, through the relax method whether there is a better route to get to v you know, using that the edge from from u to v we only have to do this v minus one times because as we said earlier there are no cycles in solutions to this so as soon as the path from your start to any other point is, has v minus one edges in it, it can't have any more edges. So we know that we don't have to relax more than that. Turns out that if you did have to relax more than that, that means you have a negative weight cycle. And that's exactly what this second for loop does, is it runs back through every edge in the entire graph and it checks. It checks, could this vertex, or could this vertex still be relaxed more using the edge from u to v? And if it can, then we're going to just give back a false and say that we're done. If none of them can be relaxed, that means that it's a happy graph and will return true. So I'm going to stop here. We'll come back in the next video and we'll look at a Scala implementation of this and see, we'll also trace through it and see how it works.